after an all-star break, you know, it's go time. We got to continue to do what we was doing before the break. This is the time of year that everybody in the NBA, if you're playing for something, this is the time of year everybody looks forward to. It's going to be a tough second half, you know, as we, us as defending champions, you know, try to come down and, um, you know, in a sense, defend our title. The Heat are in Atlanta for their first game since the All-Star break. They put a seven-game winning streak on the line against the Hawks. A steal by Wade. He's got LeBron there off the glass. <laughs> and down the wall. He says a steal by Wade. Uh-oh, here comes LeBron. <laughs> you see it coming all the way. The Heat Nation alive and well here at Phillips Arena in Atlanta. Sounds like a home game. The Heat picked up right where they left off, extending their winning streak on the road. Atlanta's a good team, and thought they had us there for a second. And tomorrow gets tougher with the Bulls. They beat us pretty good in Miami, and we know we need to play better than tonight to win that game. The Heat riding a season-high eight-game winning streak in Chicago to face the Bulls. When they had lost to a team before, the next time they met meant a whole lot more than just another game. This win was the most dominant example. The Heat held the Bulls to a season-low 67 points and rolled to a 19-point victory. We're going to give us some good basketball right now. You know, the way we're winning is how we want to win. Looking to extend their longest winning streak of the season, the Heat were looking for a 10th straight win tonight against the Sixers. And there's a steal from LeBron. Here comes a dunk. This should be fun. Yes. Look out for Oh, party time for the Heat Nation here at the Wells Fargo Center. Win number 10 in a row came on a night when Wade had a memorable match. Dwayne Wade has just reached 16,000 career points, all of them scored in a Miami Heat uniform. When I first got drafted, came in 16,000 points, I never even thought about that. I'm blessed and um, you know, I'm thankful for you know, the organization and my teammates. Back in Miami to play their fourth game in five nights, the Heat defeated the Cavs. Down the line, right with hands. 11 in a row. The Heat needed double overtime and 141 points to win number 12 in a row. Steal by Chavez. LeBron ahead for Dwayne. Dancing home with both hands. Miami found a way to win the game and, and overcome one of the obstacles during the course of that streak. We've been in some crazy games this month. Up or down, we've been able to stay the course and just figure out a way to get the victory. February was an extraordinary month for the Heat, a 12-1 record. Eric Sprostra was named Eastern Conference Coach of the Month. I'm proud of Spo. You know, it's been his fifth year now as a head coach. He's been in the playoffs every year, and his players now know more than ever that they have a man that can lead them to the promised land. And for the fourth straight time, LeBron James was the Eastern Conference Player of the Month. And when the best player in the game still finds a way to continue to get better, I mean, that just shows you what type of all-time great LeBron James is. It was one of those months for the ages. It goes to show you and this team was starting to grow, and it was what everyone had envisioned. As good as they were in 2012 to win the championship, you said to yourself, it might be better this time around. When you win 12 games in a row like the Heat have, you're feeling pretty good, you're feeling pretty loose. You're Miami Heat. Do the Harlem Shake. <laughs> You know, the Harlem Shake thing sort of caught everybody by storm, and that's the kind of camaraderie that this team has. Harlem Shake started with D-Wade and LeBron, and they said, look, we're going to do it. You know, when those two guys say we're going to do it, we're going to do it. I was appointed to uh, jump it off, and I did. When you paused that YouTube video, and you just looked at it, and you said, this is a group that fits together. You know LeBron and Dwayne and Chris have big personalities. I was more impressed with some of the other guys. Shane Battier, Ray Allen, James Jones, all these guys participating. I had to do some research, and uh, I wanted to come up with something that was, that was hilarious. So I, I brought in my horse head, and uh, I think it was Ray brought in the uh, astronaut costume. So I just combined the two and uh, invented the, the horse astronaut. And I'm in the background, very subtle, and you need to look for me. But I got some good moves. We all were serious, but at the same time, I was just like anybody else who saw it, just hysterically laughing because it was funny to me just watching them because everybody was just acting silly. My reaction was, let's do it, first of all. And then uh, I didn't need too much of a costume. My hairstyle, I'm in character every day. I looked at the video and Birdman was just in the back with his arms raised up. He was just back there like this the whole time. <laughs> watching Joe Anthony go across the screen with the little canoe thing. It was just funny, and I'm glad we was able to do it. As close as we are in that video, that's how close we are on the floor, you know, and our play shows that. You watch it once or twice or 40-something million times like the rest of 
of the world did, and it just spoke to what this team has been like for three years. Ray Allen, who's been in this league for nearly 20 years, says that he's never been a part of something like this. They really enjoyed each other. That's what you see on the court, too, in these video bombs. He promised it was going to happen. No. Video bomb king, no. Chris Bond. I don't see nothing. I want to show people that I'm having fun. It's, it's a funny, fun thing, and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of caught on a little bit, so I enjoy it. That is a look right there. When Chris got a certain amount of notoriety for video bombing, notice other guys got in the act. This was just them having fun. Let it let it let it let it My favorite photo bomb is the one when I was interviewing LeBron, and he put the towel up, and he was in the back like he was breaking the towel and the towel fell, and then he still did it, and then did this. To me, that was hilarious. What is it to what? say about this team when you have a, a superstar out? He laid the towel on LeBron d way showed and it was like, Ugh. That was the best one, classic, Mr. Miyaki. CB got me and D-Wade at home at a home game where he put the towel on D-Wade's shoulder and karate chopped it off his shoulder. That was hilarious. It goes to show how close we are. That was my favorite one. It kind of came out of nowhere, and the karate chopper was very underrated. <laughs> I mean, I just, I enjoy it. The regular season is so hard. And there's so many things going on, and, you know, with social media today and, and all the networking and the game the backs that you got to keep your sanity. While this team is having a good time enjoying each other, enjoying winning, this team has found an equal balance. It can be a long year, and obviously winning winning helps. When you win, everyone's smiling, everyone's joking, but we work really hard, and we take our job very seriously, but that doesn't mean we can't have a good time. James and teammates have recently turned the traditional layup line into a must-see dunk fest. Winning really just lets this out, and it allows them to be who they are, and they've been tight for the last two years. I've never been around a group of guys like this that continue to push the envelope on how closer we can get. I'm most grateful just about the brotherhood that we have. These guys understand that it's big business, but they're playing a game, and you should be able to have fun. You gotta just let it go and just let your hair down even though I don't have any hair. You know, I just let it go a little bit and I've had uh, extremely great time this year. Miami Heat looking to shake up the Grizzlies eight game win streak by continuing one of their own. Out to Battier for three. Kaboom! Big bucket by Battier. LeBron for three. LeBron buries it. Oh my! <laughs> LeBron from down are you kidding me? The Heat grind out the win against Memphis. That's 13 in a row, longest streak in the Big Three era. We've proven now that we can play and compete and, and ultimately win games and beat teams in, in different styles. This was a gratifying win. Next up was a Sunday showdown in New York against the Knicks. Sunday would be a, a good test for us. First time we went in New York, they handled it. And when they came here without Melo, you know, they played unbelievable. So it's going to be a tough task for us, but I know we all looking forward to it. It didn't look good early as mine was fell behind by 16. But in one of the best comebacks this team's had over the course of the entire season, they come up in the second half and outscore the Knicks throughout the third into the fourth quarter. LeBron James has irrepressible speed here. Alley-oop to James. And the Knicks just out race down the floor. And once they tied the game on a LeBron jumper at 77, the next thing you knew is the Knicks were in trouble for the first time. Chandler inside, blocked by James. LeBron James at both ends of the floor. A sensational block on a seven-footer. Once the Heat got on a run, or once a certain player got on a run, usually LeBron, like he did that day at the Garden, they weren't going to be stopped. Stolen by LeBron James. He flushes it down. Miami will tie a franchise high with 14 consecutive victories. You know, when you're on a win streak, you got to find many different ways to win ball games. And, um, you know, we've had comebacks in the last seconds. We've had double overtime games. But this is probably the most thrilling one. You know, it's the most challenging. A big time game for us. A lot of adversity today's game. But we was able to stick through the rough patches and uh, get a, a well-needed roll win. Tonight, Miami did something they have never done before. The Heat picking up their 15th straight win. Their winning streak breaks a franchise mark of 14 straight set in 2005. I think the franchise record for any other team would have been the kind of moment you stop, you salute the fans, and you celebrate. And yet you saw, even at that moment, this team was saying bigger things ahead. What we're trying to do is bigger than a streak. You know, we're trying to continue to build and win a championship. It's the golden age of basketball for the city of Miami and for this Miami Heat franchise. An exciting time to be a Miami basketball fan. Frightening for everyone else in the league. LeBron with five on the drive, lays it in, and the winning streak lives on to a sweet 16. The whole 
country is talking about Miami's 16-game winning streak. He across the Sixers and extend their winning streak to 17. With 22 games left in the season, he provided a step-up statement. Quickest team to clinch a playoff spot in franchise history. In order for the Miami Heat to extend their winning streak, they would have to do something they haven't done. Miami 0-2 this season against Indiana. The last team to beat Miami, Pacers. When the Pacers came back around on the schedule, there was something that they really wanted to prove. LeBron says, take that to your grill. Stolen by Wade. Wade, robo, con dos segundos. Un segundo, lanza tiempo el tiro. En sexta. When there's a big game situation, Mario Chalmers usually shows up. Chalmers ripping away the steal. Chalmers for three. It's on. 26 points from Mario Chalmers led the Heat to victory. For the first time ever in a regular season, Miami beat every NBA team at least once. When this team is engaged and they are laser focused, there's not anyone in the NBA that can beat them. Another home victory and three road wins pushed the Heat's winning streak to 22 games, a record for a defending champion. It also tied them with the 2008 Rockets for the second longest streak in NBA history. As the streak got longer, it became clear that it was something that they really cared about to be regarded as this really special, unique team. For us, what makes it special is being able to play against everybody any given night at a high level, whether you're home or on the road. When they go on the road, there's people who save to see one game and they know it's going to be the Miami Heat. This team embraced that way of thinking. They wanted to put on a show for everybody. A team that couldn't win on the road earlier in the season when they were 8-9 and nine after walking out of Salt Lake City is now one of the best road teams. Streak, no streak. The biggest part of this thing was every single night this team showed up and just played hard. Every game means something. And, um, you know, there's no time to relax. I'm looking at the Boston Celtics to be the team that'll put an end to that streak. Five years ago to the day, the Celtics ended the Rockets' 22-game streak. They look to repeat history behind Jeff Green, whose career-high 43 points propelled Boston to a 17-point lead at half. Down 17, it was easy to say, you know what? Nah, not tonight. We just won 22 straight. We kept fighting. Chalmers for three and the lead. Yes! Oh, my. James steps into a jumper. Celtics. It's a special opportunity that we have with this group, uh, and you don't want to take it for granted. We definitely could smell the record coming, but we never talked about it. 23. Your thoughts? That's LeBron's old number. No matter what they were saying publicly, the Heat players wanted that streak to continue, and I think that was evident in Boston. A signature Shane Battier-style play sealed the comeback, but LeBron had the most memorable moment. Oh, the dunk. Yeah, the dunk heard around the world. Chalmers, oh, dance! Whoa! That's sending it down with some power. 